Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a polynomial system. So we have x cubed equals xyz plus 1, y cubed equals xyz plus 2, z cubed equals xyz minus 3. And we're going to be looking for x, y, and z values. So one of the things you are probably thinking about here is adding these equations up. Why? Because if you add them, you get rid of the constant terms. This becomes 0. So we get x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed is equal to 3xyz. Now this is a special polynomial because if you subtract 3xyz, you get a factorable polynomial. And x plus y plus z divides this polynomial actually. You can just go ahead and factor it. So this implies that x plus y plus z is equal to 0, from which you can get x plus y in terms of z, so on and so forth. But is that going to help you with the system? That's a good question to ask, right? So one of the methods could be this one, but is that going to lead anywhere? Now let's take a look at it from another perspective. We can also write, because everything is equal to x, y, z plus minus something here, we can just go ahead and, uh, you know, subtract these equations. For example, we can subtract these two equations. If we do, then the difference is going to be x cubed, I mean y cubed minus x cubed, equals 1. That's something we get from here. So we can express y cubed in terms of x cubed, but that doesn't mean we can express y in terms of x unless you use cube, uh, cube roots. You can do the same thing pretty much with other variables. Again, this is, is this going to lead anywhere, right? That's the question to ask. I'll be using a different approach. This is not what I'm going to do, but I just wanted to show you some of the alternatives because when we get a system like this, especially polynomial systems, these are some of the things that we're, we are doing adding the equations or isolating one of the variables like using substitution, you know, elimination, so on and so forth. Here's the approach that we're going to use and it's kind of fun approach because it is a little non-standard. Well, we do, we do use it sometimes. Here's what we're going to do. And of course it makes sense to use this method. And the method involves multiplying these three equations. Now let me tell you why we multiply them, because if you multiply on the left hand side, you get, so we're multiplying them, right? We get x cubed, y cubed, z cubed. On the right hand side, we get x, y, z plus 1, x, y, z plus 2, and x, y, z minus 3. Now, here we can use, since x, y, x cubed, y cubed, z cubed can be written as x, y, z to the third power, we can actually use substitution here. So let's go ahead and set x, y, z equal to u. And we get u cubed is equal to u plus 1 times u plus 2 times u minus 3. If you go ahead and distribute this, you're going to get u cubed is equal to, let's go ahead and multiply u plus 2 and u minus 3 together. That should give me u squared minus u minus 6. And then if I distribute again, I should be getting u cubed minus u squared minus 6u plus u squared minus u minus 6. u squared cancels out and u cubed cancels out, leaving us with 0 on the left hand side. If you put all the u terms on the left hand side, we get 7u, I can't make the joke, 2u here because we don't have a 2, but I can say 7u is equal to negative 6, which implies that u is equal to negative 6 over 7. Now what is u equal to? u is equal to x, y, z, so this means x, y, z is equal to negative 6 over 7. Now this is an important finding because we're going to use it in our system. Remember, our system gives x cubed, y cubed, z cubed, all of them, in terms of x, y, z. So we can just go ahead and substitute everything, right? So let's see what we can do. We can just go ahead and replace x, y, z with negative 6 over 7 in each equation. And that gives us x cubed is equal to negative 6 over 7 plus 1. And this means that, actually I can just write it equal to, and then use the implies. This equals 1 over 7. And then if you cube root both sides, you get x equals 1 over cube root of 7. And then you do, you do the same thing for y, 
you get y cubed is equal to negative 6 over 7 plus 2. That's 14, so that's going to give me 8 over 7. If you cube root both sides, you get 2 over cube root 7. And then for z, it's going to be pretty much similar, but this time we have a minus sign. That's going to give me a negative 21. Negative 6 minus negative, negative 6 minus 21 is going to be negative 27, which is, again, a perfect cube. That's kind of nice. And this should give me negative 3 over cube root of 7. Okay. So, well, I just wrote x, but they should be y and z values. So this gives us x, y, and z values, right? Okay, great. Well, that's what we were trying to find, right? So we found the x, y, z values. Are there any other solutions? Nope. Cube root of 7 only has one value. So if x cubed equals a number, then you only get one solution. Of course, we're talking about real solutions. If you get into the complex solutions, of course, uh, 1 over 7 has 3 cube roots and... You can kind of talk about the other ones as well. Now, since if you look at this, the solutions carefully, you kind of notice that x, y, z are proportional somewhat, right? If you, for example, if 1 over cube root of 7 is a constant, like let's call that k, or we can call it x, then y would be 2x and z would be negative 3x. So that kind of tells me, can I look at this equation from a different angle? Such as, can I say that y can be written as kx, and z can be written as m times x, and then if I plug it in, I get a nice system. Because the only variables that I'm going to have is going to be k and m. Let me show you why that's the case, because if you replace each equation uh, with this, then you get the following. k cubed x cubed. And then you always get kmx cubed, by the way, from x, y, z, because if you multiply these two, you get kmx squared, and then another x will give you x cubed. And so what happens is, let me tell you, you can just pull out an x cubed here, and then subtract, like factor it, and this should give you the x cubed value. From here, you can write x cubed is 1 over 1 minus km. And then from the second equation, if you factor out an x cubed, just like the other one, uh, you should be getting... You should be getting something like k cubed minus km, and that should equal 2. If you divide both sides, then you get 2 over k cubed minus km. And obviously, these are both k cubed, x cubed values, so you can set them equal to each other. Do the same thing with the third one, and you'll get a system of equations in two variables. Okay? And you can easily solve that and then go back. Of course, there are going to be integers in this case. As you can see, x, y, z are proportional. All right? So, this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.